good morning, afternoon, evening, everybody. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for February 25th of 2022. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Again, if you are here live, you're welcome to jump over here on the chat side. Um, otherwise, if you have a question, please do drop it over on the questions tab. And uh, feel free to chat with everybody here. Um, and then if you're watching recorded, if you do want to join us live, just join up for our newsletter on the twistedsage.com website, and we'll send you a link when we do our almost weekly webcasts here. So wonderful people from Australia and Alberta, North Carolina, and hello, everybody. Glad you guys are all here today. Thank you for being here. Hey, Samson. All right, so um, we will begin by going into the sacred space of the heart. We always begin everything that we do with those three breaths to move the consciousness from here back to here. So if you'd like to join me here and closing your eyes is the easiest, you can leave them open if you wish. But just putting your attention to your physical heart where you find your light, your soul's fire, and imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth and breathing in that energy, that support of the earth up through the feet and into the heart. And next we connect with the heart of creation, source, soul, creator, God, however you see and say that, taking in that deep breath into the heart. Then taking that deep breath from both earth and creation Bring them both together within you so that it's like you are a column of light that is grounded and connected and in the heart space. And that energy from creation flows to the earth. The energy from earth flows to creation. And you are that conduit. All right. So, um, again, be sure to drop your questions in the questions tab. We have some questions from the Internet that we will catch here first. So, let's see. <clears throat> this question is from Andrea. About your quantum healer pendant, the energy of it, is it a combination of the alchemist set plus the wisdom ring? So instead of requiring four tools, you have the same energy in one tool? Um, so that's correct. So the alchemist set, the set of three rings that create the alchemist set, um, come together to form that energetics of the wisdom. And that wisdom energetics is what is in this in this coil pendant but there's different applications so the coil pendant is only working on your field your 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 person it's only working on your person where a ring if you use a ring or a set of rings they're creating a column of energy you can use them with your your drinks your supplements you, on your body for sending that concentrated light right into a space or a situation. Um, so using the rings is going to give you a different, um, there's different purposes. Uh, with a ring, it's really versatile and you can use it for many, many things. Versus the, the quantum heart coil pendant, it's not anything that extends out into your environment. Um, it's not anything that you can, you know, that you would just used to run energy to a certain spot or anything like that. The quantum heart coil pendant is a space holder for you. And it is a phenomenal space for, for you, for anybody. Um, so anyway, that's, that's um, with the difference between the quantum heart coil. But as far as the energetics goes, yes, it does contain the energetics of those other tools, plus a lot more that's found in that quantum heart coil. Um, and is the pendant a wand too? So no, actually the coil is not the wand. Um, you'd have to go with that mini, the, the mini quantum wisdom wand. Um, either that or else, you know, we have the, the three basic sizes of the wisdom wand, the full size, the mini version, which is still, you know, fairly large. And then we have that smaller version of the pendant size. And that's the one that you can use to run energy with. Um, and have you hung the quantum heart 
codependent in your pyramid. And again, no, I haven't because basically that field of the pyramids, the field of the pyramids is holding the updates of everything that we do. So whenever we are creating any of these new tools, um, Mm, no, I take that back. We have not consciously put that into the pyramids yet of this quantum heart pendant. So that is something that we will be doing and addressing is making sure that the pyramids are containing all of the newest energies, which they can do that because of their geometries and all the different tools that, that are holding space there. The pyramids, um, the ascension pyramids are able to hold all of those energies um, just because of what they are. So as far as putting that coil inside of the pyramid, it's not going to do a whole lot, but as soon as we anchor the energetics into the pyramid, then that is certainly going to, to assist there. Um, let's see. Then I had one more question on, um, from email, which I'm not sure it's, it's a question about doing some, energy work with Russia and Ukraine. And so we might do some consciousness work here at the end where we simply shine our light, but I will never lead a group to do the style of energy work where we go in as a human with human perspective and trying to fix and change things. Um, and I know that we are powerful people, the powerful beings, and that we can go in and do things. But um, to me, that is not, you know, to me, that's in kind of an older paradigm of, of us being the judge of what is right and wrong and not seeing a bigger picture versus if we go in and instead of being a light warrior and we go in and we fight the dark, we become a true light worker, a light shower, um, a light radiator. And we step in and we hold light without an intended outcome, without a judgment, without taking sides. Um, and we just hold light. And that we may do today um, because there's a huge difference between a light warrior and a being who just shines their light. One is based in the duality creation still, if we're out there fighting the dark. Um, because if you're fighting the dark, then we are still perpetuating the duality experience versus if we can step in and just shine our light. And that is truly where the true power, potency, and magic is, is if we can step out of the way and shine our light. So perhaps here at the end of the 50 questions, we can do some light shining here. So anyway, that's all the questions I have from emails. So we'll jump over here to the questions tab. Can you use the regeneration rings to clear crystals? Yes. Um, so basically any tensor field, any, any working tensor ring uh, is going to come through and it'll clear the surface of the crystal, the, the surface of the crystal, you know, where, where it absorbs, um, you know, where it absorbs the energies and where you put your intentions and programs in the crystals. It is always on that surface. Um, and so any of the tensor fields are going to come through and they will clear that energetics of the surface. Now, like what the newer, like what the wisdom rings are doing with crystals is it is bringing such a higher potentiality of the consciousness into the crystal. Now the regeneration is doing that too. The regeneration ring is still bringing that consciousness of the crystal more into itself while it is doing the clearing work, while it is raising everything in frequency and vibration. Um, and then, so the regeneration is a fantastic ring to use with the crystals. The wisdom is simply another step in, in the conscious connection with the crystals. But yes, any tensor ring will actually clear that, that energy on the surface of the crystal where the wisdom ring allows the, the energetics to go to the core, to the consciousness, to, to the internal structure of the crystal, the internal energy structure, to where that crystal becomes more of what it is. Um, which is pretty phenomenal because that's what the wisdom fields are doing for everything. Um, it's just allowing us to be more of what we are, plant, crystal, human, animal. Um, Andrea, 
quantum heart coil, would it work placing in the pyramid? Oh, yep. And so, you know, we will take this quantum heart coil energetics and we'll make sure that that is anchored into the pyramids. Next time I get with Brenda here, maybe over the weekend, um, we will get that anchored into the pyramids. So that, that quantum heart coil energetics is held in there because they have the, the possibility, the potential to hold all the energies that we, we work with and create and, and discover. Um, in my copper pyramids, not one of your pyramids. Oh, okay. Then totally. Yes. Um, to me, when I see that you put that quantum heart coil pendant inside of just, you know, inside of a, a Cheops pyramid or, or any style of pyramid like that, that's holding an energy structure within it. Um, to me, I do see like it's producing, you know, like a small field. Um, but the thing about these quantum tools is, is that if you can catch hold of that field or just have your intentions when you put that in there, that you can actually direct that field, that you can move that field, you can expand that field, that quantum heart coil, um, you know, you can expand it in that field will stay as long as your attention is on there because that quantum heart coil with that, with that field that it creates, um, we can access these fields. Well, once we know these fields, we can basically use our intentions, imagination, visualization while being in the heart space. And we can take that field and we can move it and hold it someplace. I do this with my daughter. So if she's sitting there having a little steamy rough time being 11 teen, man, it's going to be rough to be a sixth grade girl um, in public school systems. But when she's just sitting there in, in, you know, in that space that, you know, you get into, um, I just imagine that quantum heart coil pendant and I just move it over and I sit it right over top of her and it'll stay there for as long as my attention is there. And again, with these fields and spaces, when you do that style of work, you're just holding the space. I'm not trying to you know, fix her or anything. I just want to hold space for her to do whatever she needs to do in her process more comfortably. So that's, that's what I hold the space for, for her. Um, let's see. Um, is the quantum healing wand now the same as the wisdom wand? So the quantum healer, which is this even smaller little one here that was the predecessor. Um, we are no longer making these ones and they do not contain the energetics of the wisdom. So the quantum healers are still a fantastic space holder, a fantastic tool. They still carry the energetics of all of the wands prior to them. Um, but as far as the wisdom wand energetics after, no, they're not containing the energetics of the wisdom wands. Um, the quantum healers. All right. So Nika, does anchoring in the quantum heart, does anchoring the quantum heart into pyramids include the quantum grid point pyramids? And that's a good question. I'm fairly certain that once we do the energetics with the, um, the Ascension pyramids, um, answer is yes. The little quantum heart grid points are also going to contain that energetics because they are connected into that same grid, that same energetic system. So as we shift the energetics of these bigger ascension pyramids, that also shifts the energetics of the quantum grid points as well as the ascension grid pyramids, the, the, the medium sized ones. Um, so yeah, once we, once we shift them, everything will shift. Um, and then I'll try to do a write up on that once we do and um, I have a lot of blogs that I really should be putting out there because as soon as we we do these energetic updates, you know, it's not really written about anywhere. Um, but we're always, you know, adding to the energetics, which then translates into those specific tools. Um, so I'll try to write a blog on some of these energetic updates that we are doing here. Uh, Renard. Hey, Renard. I've been intuitively using Moldavite with my quantum heart coil. How does it work with crystals? So 
you know, and, and that's it. If you are, if you have this quantum heart coil and you are wearing, you should have a crystal lane around here and you're wearing that crystal pendant, um, you know, here too, that energetics, um, to me, it looks like it's not like that piece of Moldavite is right there in that field. To me, what it looks like is it's like pulling, um, it's like little wisps of energy that are coming off of that Moldavite and coming into that center. So it's not like, yeah, it's not like that Moldavite is in your crystal clear, pure space that you have when you're wearing the pendant. It's like it is coming in as little wisps of support as determined by your soul, of course, your higher consciousness. So when you're wearing that crystal with here, it is going to affect the crystal and it'll affect the crystal in a magnificent positive way. But how the crystal affects your field and with this quantum heart coil pendant is just those little wisps of energy that come in as support. And perhaps you even wear a crystal that that there's nothing that comes in as support but it will always affect the crystal as you bring it in so yeah you can use the quantum heart coil pendants and place them on crystals um things like that to still do that work and i'm really curious i haven't tried it yet but i would like to take a silver silver and put it in my water because i think that's gonna be super phenomenal so i have to try that here and i had a lot of time to experiment um Micah, hey, do the different size pyramids also clear crystals? And if it has the wisdom energy, does it then amplify them? So yes, all the pyramids do contain that wisdom energetics. So, and all the pyramids do clear crystals because of the field that it holds and it will bring in that higher conscious aspect of the crystal because it does contain those wisdom energetics. So yeah, the, the pyramids are are kind of a... Um, an underrated, pretty powerful, powerful tool um, in in the fields that they can hold and the potentials of all those updates that they receive. Jr., can I can I use the wisdom wand to shift the energy in people with their permission and pets? I remember the discussion was to shift energy in things. <clears throat> so basically, any time that we do the work with these tools is um and it's that difference that i kind of talked about of being the light warrior versus the light worker it's like we don't come in it, it, it depends on your approach to them so just again it's being in the heart space and and in that field of allowing them to be whatever it is that they be so again if we come in and we're using our wand and we're like oh man you know i really want to change um, you know, I want to fix, heal, help, you know, my perception version of help. I know because it's with my daughter too. You know, I want to do everything I can to help her. But the best thing you can really do is, you know, hold space and be there when she needs and send lots of love. So with the person that you're going to be doing the work with um, and you're using the wisdom wand, you certainly can use the wisdom wand with them because all you're going to be doing is holding a space for them. And you don't need their permission because anytime that we do work with the tools, we are working soul to soul. We are holding a soul level field to where we're not coming in and actually affecting the human and doing our things person to person. We are holding a space, holding a field, which is then between that person and their soul. All we do is we create this space within this space it is between them and their soul what occurs, but we all know the potentials and possibilities that can occur as we are holding that space because we all, you know, if you have a wand, you know the potentials and possibilities um, and you hold that space and then it's between the soul and them for what potentials and possibilities occur with them and when. Um, so, yes, you can still totally shift other people, pets, plants, um, anything with consciousness, just everything. Um, you can totally shift that by holding the space with the wisdom wand um, or, or a wisdom ring or a column of light that has that energetics of the wisdom in it. Um, it's just going to be holding that space for them. And, you know, 
truly these spaces are is, is places where we are going anyway. So most likely people are going to catch into these and there are going to be shifts that occur because it is bringing such a great remembrance and it's just time. It's just time on the planet. So many of the, the, the things that we came here to do, our old pathways, our old, you know, soul contracts, the soul growth learning, whatever it all was. Um, so much of that is no longer in support of what we're doing and what we are in support being supported by is, is stepping into consciousness, letting go of all of the old stuff. And that's where the support is. And, and yeah. So if you are wanting somebody who are offering that support as well, um, Alan, I received my orders yesterday and wanted to know, and, and I have, to, wanted to know how to work with the trauma of your dog with the quantum heart coils. So with a quantum heart coil, um, if you simply place the coil on their collar, um, you know, and if they don't wear collars, just hold the coil, you know, just sit with them, go into the heart space, hold the coil onto the pet. Um, and just intend and imagine that that is connecting into their heart. It's creating that field around them. Um, so you can be the witness and help hold that space with the pet by going in that heart, holding the, the, the pendant there with them and just imagining using your visualization, intention, imagination, imagining that, that, um, that cocoon of light around them, um, or simply, you take the, the coil pendant, hang it on the collar and just let him go because it'll always be holding that space. It'll be always grounding and just containing that space for them to release. Cause you know, a lot of pets carry things that aren't theirs. <laughs> so that can certainly help if you have a pet that likes to take on all your crap. It's, it's a, it's a great tool for them. And, and again, it can just happen automatically that you just simply, give it to them and let them run with it. Um, so yeah, basically it's, um, it's going to hold the space, Alan. So, you know, just, yeah, I, I wouldn't worry too much about, you know, doing that extra work, but if you do do the energy work, then yeah, that's what I would do is just sit and be that witness for them of that space and anything that does not serve them releasing. And it's a beautiful thing working with animals because animals don't like to hold on to their crap and make it their experience. So um, I, I think you'll have great luck. So look forward to your changes with your critter. Uh, let's see, Micah, how does the wisdom rings do with household electrical systems and phones? Are you going to change out the rings we use now? So no, we're sticking with the golden fire still, but the golden fire too with, because the golden fire is the, the Wi-Fi rings, the cell tabs, um, all the electromagnetic remediation tools are in the golden fire. And in all actuality, that has even been um, shifted to those particular tools because anymore, like when I twist up a cell phone tab, it's just the intention of bringing in all the highest and best energetics for that particular tool for all the people that are going to use it um, is basically how, you know, we make the cell tabs anymore. So the cell tabs are going to be a little bit more than just um, that field of the golden fire. They're going to contain a lot more supportive energies in there as well. Um, so as far as how does the wisdom rings work with electromagnetics, it still does a great job. Um, not seeing that it's anything really spectacular. So it's not like, um, you know, doing anything really different than what the golden fire did, um, with the, with the electromagnetics. So anyway, yeah, it's kind of hard to say where we're going with the wisdom because again, oh gosh, it was just another step. And granted, it was a huge step, and I thought maybe we had gotten to our plateau, but, you know, we're never going to plateau because we're always going to keep growing in consciousness and abilities. And so the wisdom is just another stepping stone. 
Hard to say how long we'll be here, but it's another stepping stone. Uh, Kendall, if the pyramids can clear crystals, do the crystals have to be under the pyramid or just in the pyramid's field range? Okay, so really the, the crystals, I would put them under the pyramid for the clearing work or use one of the rings on your pyramid um, because basically outside of the pyramid is kind of like outside of a tensor field generator in that it's, it's a nice, beautiful, transformative field, but it's also... Um, it's not as a potent of a field as the field inside of a pyramid or the field inside of a tensor field generator, you know? Um, so when you can, if you are really wanting to do that work with your crystals, then I would bring your crystals inside of that pyramid. Um, and they don't have to be there for very long either. Um, because basically within the pyramids, it's a no time space and you can just bring the crystals in there for just a few minutes and it's, it, it does the work. Now you do have a lot of really phenomenal pieces and parts to that pyramid too, such as the alchemist rings that you can use on there and put those around your crystals because the alchemist rings are going to be doing, you know, they, they contain that field of the wisdom energetics. So just that set of alchemist rings on your pyramid is going to be doing great things with the crystals and and that might be an even easier thing to do is to use those large rings with the with the crystals for the for the clearing and activation integration connection everything that occurs with them um hey Yentol, what are your top three favorite tools for clearing dark energy well actually we are getting ready to release a light workers kit um, not a light warrior's kit, a light worker's kit, um, which is going to include the wisdom wand, the new wings of talk the, on the wings of talk. And yeah, we're getting ready to, um, before we release this package, we're going to do some working with those names because now that we're almost out of, of the old, um, the old wings of talk that we, that we had on sale, um, we're going to change that name back around for the new on the wings of talk because it's just you know those names are a little confusing and we're going to bring it back to the wings of talk so the the, the new wings of talk is going to be one of the tools as well as the wisdom wand the third tool is going to be one of the coil pendants one of the copper coil pendants the fourth tool is going to be the Alchemist Halo, that set of 22 inch rings that expands. Um, because when you are, especially when you're very first doing, you know, if you are working with any of those darker, denser energies, um, when you stand in that set of three rings of that, that Alchemist Halo, it just gives you that knowing and that feeling of protection and protection is not even the right word because nothing can truly ever happened to us, but it just, it, it, it brings that nice soft field of just where you are safe, um, where nothing can touch you, where you are, you are, you, you are the, I am you, you stand in your power where you are untouchable. And so when you do the work and you are using those large rings to stand in, um, it just keeps you out of fear. It keeps you in the heart. It keeps you clear because anytime you are doing any of this big work, um, you know, of holding space for dense consciousness, um, you know, especially great big things, you know, you can fall into fear. And as soon as you fall into fear, man, you're done. You know, then you, then you're like, okay, um, I accept everything, you know, and just, yeah, when you fall into fear, everything you're, you're just done. So that's when you're using those tools to help you stay in center alignment, grounded, connected. Um, but anyway, so for, so for Yento, the three favorite tools for clearing dark energy, the wands, because of the columns of light that you create the wings of talk, definitely. Cause that's, that's what that tool was created for. Um, but then if that dark, dense energy is not outside of yourself, which for most of us, it is not. If it is not outside of yourself, then the coil pendant for all of that internal cleaning of any of the dark energies that you find there. Um, so, yeah, that's 
those are the tools and so we'll be we'll we'll make that kit here over the next week or so i'll actually be gone for the next week but um we're going to be working on that kit and and releasing that one because i feel that's going to be a pretty powerful important one for all the people who are waking up right now and wanting to do the work and and presenting it in such a way that that we can become you know true light workers, consciousness holders, light holders, you know, light emitters, radiators, things like that. Instead of being, you know, the warriors of light who are going out there and fighting the darkness and, and all oh, those damn cabal and the reptilians and, oh my God, I'm going to kick them off the planet. You know, it, it, when we, when we fight wars, it's, it's never a good thing. So as we become, light workers we work with these beings we see the spark of divinity we hold the space for them to remember and for them to connect with their spark of divinity as soon as they do they drop their agendas and then they become part of the flow of the higher consciousness potential so we're transforming we're transforming low consciousness dense energy through the use of high consciousness and holding that space of connection and remembrance. Um, anyway, uh, Brennan, thank you for the assistance yesterday. Send a follow-up email. Um, let's hold in space for, for Brennan. We've been doing some work at his place there. Is it possible to anchor columns of light in people's energy fields to help defend or ward off severe entity attacks in the case more multidimensional? So, you know, the columns of light that, the columns of light are usually pretty stationary. Um, so when you anchor a column of light, I always see it as, as a stationary column. Now, you still can create a column of light that is mobile and that's with you, but that is kind of up to the person. The person needs to be the one that brings in that column of light for themselves because it is connected with their heart and, and they become that column of light. So... You know, if you are working with, um, there's, if there's a lot of dense energy in your space, you have, you know, portal vortexes and these geomagnetic lines that carry all the ghost waywards in your space. And, um, you know, there's that vortex that's spewing out dense energy or funky craters coming out of it or whatever. Um, basically once you clear your environment um which you know we do with those columns of light with the wings of talk you know the columns of light with the wisdom wand um once the environment is clear then um basically it's just keeping that space held in the environment um for people to let go now anytime that you have an entity attachment so we call an entity a um a being who's not in the physical obviously that is in that higher plane higher dimensional plane not higher consciousness plane but in a higher dimensional plane to where we don't see them with physical eyes and they can come in um and if they come in and they affect us that is a choice we never 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 do we have our free will violated never if you are having the biggest, deepest, funkiest entity attachment and all the stuff going on within you, that's not, a, that's not from within you, that's outside of yourself. You chose and allowed that to come in. It is a choice. It is a choice. My sister used to tell me things about me and my choices. And I'm like, no. It's not a choice, really. You know, how do I choose something like that? Well, in reality, these are choices that we create. Maybe not here mentally with our mind saying, oh, yeah, I want all this stuff. But it is an agreement that you had with that being because nothing can violate your free will. So it is an agreement that you have with that being, that outside energy. You agree to allow it to come in. So you have to simply make that conscious choice just say no i do not allow that in my field i am a sovereign being i am that i am do it from the heart don't do it from here fighting or in fear do it from the heart 
and be I am and I am in my sovereignty. I am untouchable and I release all that is not mine. That is how you can make the choice not to carry it is to make those statements from the heart. And it can be as simple, as simple as that. Um, so anything personal, every person, it is up to them to choose whether they want that or not. Now we can go in, we have gone in and cleared entity attachments before. And so, you know, that is something that you can do. Um, but in truth and reality is that we can do it ourselves by just simply saying no more, making that choice. Um, I would say to give that a shot, to make that choice um, consciously, you know, and, and speak it from the heart. JR, does the mini ascension grid pyramid or quantum grid point help to preserve food? I heard that things are preserved when placed under pyramids. So really the, um, the Egyptian pyramids are the ones that are that 54 degree angle or whatever it is. So the Egyptian pyramids are the ones that are working with physical reality. They are the ones that hold this third density physical reality grid in place. So when you are using an Egyptian pyramid, then yes, it, there's all kinds of great studies on how it preserves food and the edges of razors and all kinds of wild stuff. I mean, there's a lot of studies out there, but the pyramids that we're working with are more about consciousness, the 60 degree angle. It's about consciousness. Um, so if you're using it with the pyramids, yes, you can still, um, preserve food with these just have your intention that that's what you're doing. And if you're putting food in there, you already, you have that intention. So you can use these fields, um, just as you can use a set of rings, um, to raise the frequency and vibration of food, to clear out the harmful effects of GMOs. Um, and the rings are also going to be changing the frequency and vibration of, of everything within the food. So you can use the rings with your food as well, um, as well as the pyramids. So, cause to me the the pyramids would only be holding basically that same space as the rings for working with the food versus the Egyptian style pyramids that are just holding a different space in, in physical work of physical molecules, um, directly instead of through consciousness. Um, Andrea, I worked with essential oil rollers. Can I charge them with the quantum heart coil or any of your tools? You know, so Andrea, I would certainly suggest using a ring. Um, you can use the coil because the coils are still creating a field. So, I mean, you can still bring the coil, you know, next to your bottle and, and let it sit there for a few minutes. Um, other ways that you can work with the essential oils, use the wand to run energy into them. But truly the simple and easiest way is, is I would suggest getting yourself a set of either the water wisdom alchemist rings or, or just simply a wisdom ring, the water wisdom alchemist rings, because there's three rings. It's just, it's more potent right there on that, on the field. Um, and when you are working with oils in the tensor fields, holy smokes, the, the tensor fields will put such a high spin rate to the oil that we've seen, um, there's been testing done on, on um, coconut oil that was manufactured and they used the tensor rings with the manufacturing process. And the gentleman who came in to do the study in Costa Rica found that it went off of the measurable charts. Um, the coconut oil, once it's been exposed to the tensor ring, it went off of measurable charts for the energetics. And this gentleman's only seen it once before, and that's when he was working with Dr. Emoto and some of the work, water that Emoto was was um, charging was that it went off the measurable charts as well with GDV photo imagery. Um, so when you bring, when you just use a simple ring is what I would suggest, or that trio, whatever you're drawn to, but even just a simple ring. And it can be just that small wisdom ring, even that you carry in your pocket and you, and it's a perfect size to slip over the oils, leave it there for a few minutes to an hour. Um, a few minutes is fine. And it puts such a high spin rate to that oil. Um, it'll 
keep it that way for a longer time because oil um it, it holds that spin rate better than water does um so so oil is is a great great um a great media to work with when you are using the the spin rate um let's see jr will you have a sale on the quantum heart soon um probably not um you know the quantum heart coil was one that we tried very hard to get this one as inexpensive as we possibly could um which which uh 36 bucks for this coil pendant is pretty fantastic um so i don't think we're going to have a you know i don't think we'll have a, a sale on the the quantum heart coils pendants anytime soon you know maybe once we have our one of our annual sell, sales um but uh yeah like i say we've tried to make these as inexpensive as possible so you can get them um, you know in the copper without the lanyard for like 36 bucks so um uh, mirna when will the wrist size alchemist halo be ready <laughs> oh gosh i think it's been two weeks since I said I was going to put this up onto the um, prototype page, this wrist size Alchemist Halo, we have some other things that I need to get photographed and put up on the prototype page too. So I will see if I can make time to do that. Um, just getting ready to go to Colorado Springs for an event and then um, further south. So I'll see if I can get that before I take off here for a week. Um, and again, these will only be these um, Alchemist Halo wrist size are just going to be the prototype. We probably have like a dozen of these, I think. Um, and that's all we're going to make of these, I believe. But um, but yeah, we, we do want to make them available um, because it's been what I've been wearing on my wrist is, is this Alchemist, the Alchemist Halo. Uh, Brennan, situation's been a bit more complex. Um, so I think Brennan will probably have to talk a little bit more by email because all this is kind of, um, you know, it's, it's, yeah, I, I think that we need to have our conversation, um, through email versus here on the, the webinar. Um, let me see if I can answer some of the questions though. Um, to anchor a column of light over a home or to clear a portal vortex. Uh, so if you are anchoring columns of light to, to clear something and you know where the, that portal vortex is, you want to anchor the column of light into the portal vortex because that will close it and clean and clear it and clean and clear all the geomagnetic lines that created it as well as, um, you know, when you have your intention, it's going to clear all of those who utilized that portal vortex. So if anything came out of it, um, any funny business going on there, it will clear that as well with that intention of just clearing everything throughout all time that has access to use that portal vortex. Um, what happened to the four coil rainmaker plate? Oh, I think somebody, somebody obviously must have bought that four coil or rainmaker plate. And yes, we need to make more of those and start playing with those here. Um, still kind of working on the weather changing um, aspect of this thing. The the four coil rainmaker plate that we had on what we're discussing is, was we had the prototype product page and we had a plate that had the alchemist rings in it and then four coils. And in the center, you either put a crystal sphere or a tensor field generator or a Gaia sphere, um, as the programming point. And you set it on the ground and it connects in with the earth. And, um, basically it's a way to amplify intentions. And when we first used it, we had the intention of creating rain because that's what Slim Sperling, you know, that was his intention when he gave us this design. Um, and so we will have to keep playing with this one for sure. 
we just had so many projects going on we just haven't um gotten them back so yeah thank you for that reminder because um you know that's if you guys keep bugging us about the things that you're after then you know we might be able to bring those into being so because that's why we make the prototypes really is to see you know if people like them and and how well they're functioning and working as intended with rainmaker plate i think we still need a little bit more energetic tweaking to it so we'll have to get that one back on the drawing board um micah if you put a ring inside or on top of the fridge will it affect all the food and liquid within or do you need a practitioner sized ring to put on top and cover the entire fridge or freezer so again, a, a ring will create a column of light the size of the ring. So um, there are some ways that you can disperse this column of light. So this is only, if you put this on the fridge, it is only affecting what is within this particular column. So that's why we suggest larger practitioner rings to sit on top of there, on top of the fridge to then cover the whole thing now you can slightly disperse this column of light this is a straight column that comes out of here if you put a crystal inside of here any quartz crystal basically it will make it shoot out more more of in a funnel like but not if you want to work with the food in the fridge um, you'll still need to have that larger ring that can encompass everything within the fridge and then when you do that whatever you put in this ring whether it is crystals or supplements or whatever those energetically get taken down through all the food in the fridge as well so um you know like with our water rings we or i mean sorry our water coasters with our water coasters we have anchi crystals lapidolite shungite and the hedica all within there and so that is energetically that is being carried because the ring acts as a carrier wave for all of those things that are right within the ring to be carried on that field. Um, so you can do that same thing with the food and water and beverages in the fridge. Just have that larger ring, place your supplements, crystals, and that will energetically imprint into your food and drinks. Uh, how long does water remain structured after using the wisdom, water wisdom rings? Indefinitely, if it is in a vacuum of energy, but as soon as water comes out, water is being acted upon by all energies, whether it is electromagnetic or whether it is consciousness, emotions, water is always acted upon by outside energies. So it is very hard to say how long your water will keep that charge and clean and clear energetically because, um, once it's once it is and it comes out of that field it's just dependent upon your environment but usually what it's about four to six hours in like a um in a standard metropolitan environment you go into you know a large workspace it's about four to six hours that it keeps that high spin rate when it is in you know a little bit of a chaotic not really super high but just a kind of a chaotic midline environment um about four to six hours is, is what we see so um enough to make it through halfway through work at least have you tried using the new quantum heart coils with the rainmaker no um you know we have not done a lot of experimenting with those quantum heart coils yet but that's definitely something now with these wisdom energetics where the wisdom energetics are basically allowing consciousness to more readily and easily repattern energy, which makes up all reality, not just physical, but life situations, mental, emotional, everything, um, our patterns of energy and the wisdom fields are allowing our higher consciousness to repattern energy in creation. And so I think it's a fantastic idea to use that style of energetics of the quantum heart coils in with that rainmaker plate because that will allow us to then more easily affect physical reality with consciousness. So thank you for that. Um, definitely thank you for that. That's a great idea. Uh, Holly. Is there an ongoing benefit to having a quantum heart pendant if we've had a personal session with you? 
Also, is there any tool you might suggest to energize? Okay, so yes, the quantum heart coil pendant, um, it's something that even if you've done the work and you feel like you're just um, completely clean and clear and man, I'm, I'm realized I don't have any more work to do. The pendant is still going to be holding a phenomenal space so that you are not re um, creating new stuff or taking in new stuff, um, you know, creating new belief structures, um, you know, carrying your emotions and traumas and reactions that you accumulate through the day or those things that are truly still within the core and haven't completely surfaced. I had so much crap surface this week. I thought I was done with my anger stuff of coming up. No, I found another deep, deep layer. And, you know, so wearing the quantum heart coil pendant does have benefits when you're wearing it all the time because of the feel that it keeps you held in, keeps you aligned, balanced in the heart. But it's going to continue to do the work, that deep, deep work. It's going to continue to do it. So definitely suggest still still wearing one. Um, is there any tool that you suggest to energize my hypnotherapeutic recorded products to super amplify positive effects for clients? Um, so if you are working with um, sound um, and digital sound and digital media, um, basically, it's kind of like when we do, um, when we take pictures or we make a video, um, we are bringing in the energetics into those photos. We're bringing the energetics into the video. Um, like if we do meditations on, you know, like right here, that space is held for any person who would watch that in the future to be included in that inclusive sacred space that we hold together. So the work that we do transcends time of when a person would look at it. So if you are wanting to amplify your recordings, you would want to either take yourself back in time to when you made the recording, hold the space for all of that light, your consciousness, you're shining to come into that recording here and now or re-record it. But you can go back through time, intention, in the heart space. Hold the space for that energy to go into that recording, your light, and then let that be. Um, simple as that. So, yes, um, it's more about you doing the consciousness work versus using the tools. The tools can help you and can hold the space, though. Um, Robert. Can you pass along an item like a quantum heart coil to a friend or another person later? Yes. So all tools are self-clearing. All the, the quantum heart coil pendant, it is your field. But you hand the pendant to somebody else, it is their field. You're not sharing energies. They are self-clearing. Um, how long do tensor rings or generators need to be exposed next to water to transmute anything negative within the water? Um, again, a tensor field generator is going to be more of a sunshine. So it's kind of like a... Um, it's like a, it's just like a sunshine. So it's not a concentrated beam of light. If you use a ring, it's a concentrated beam of light more than the sunshine. So when you are working with water, it is suggested to use a ring versus a generator. Um, a generator can still do it, but it takes a longer time to be exposed to those fields. Um, you know, if you put a generator right next to the water, you know, you're, you're still getting, um, you know, that field is more potent right there versus if you set this a mile away. Um, so a generator can still do it. I can't say the specific time because I would have to see the situation that you're using it as. But for a ring, a ring will charge water in four to six hours with a any tensor ring. If you take the alchemist set, it will restructure the water in two to four hours. If you do the meditation that we did, I believe it's December 3rd that we did the meditation with the water wisdom alchemist rings. If you do that meditation with those rings, you can restructure the water 
instantly because we're bringing in the consciousness of water into that field to do that work for us instantly. Um, so it, it kind of depends on the situation, but yeah, using a ring for six hours, two to four with the alchemist instantly. If you do the energy work with the alchemist set, or you can do the energy work without a single ring at all as well. If you do that meditation, I believe from December 3rd. Um, hey there. I hope you're well working in an area that commonly has heavy metals in the air. Do you have any techniques or uses with the tools to work with metals and or the body to clean it out so it doesn't create such a toxic buildup? That's a good question. Um, that's something that I've worked with Brenda with me personally that she's helped me do things before because at one time I breathed in a bunch of plastic dust. I was, um, clearing cleaning in the outside edge of a floor plate and I was dusting and uh, my mask was, I did not have a very good mask. So I inhaled a bunch of this fine dust, which just sticks in your lungs. It's kind of like asbestos and Brenda helped me clear that out. Basically, um, you know, it, it's, that's just using that, that visualization, imagination, heart space and intentions and seeing that stuff in the lungs and wrapping it up in these little bubbles so that it can then be expelled and it worked. Um, it cleared it. Now, as far as working with the heavy metals that are floating through the air, um, you know, what I would suggest is to use something that will create a field in the environment, such as either a column of light or using a tensor field generator in the area and really putting in, going into the heart and putting in those intentions into that, either that field that you're creating with a column of light or with your tensor field generator that you are cleaning, clearing, harmonizing. And that is another big word that you use for the internal stuff that you have as you harmonize it. You make it so that it is not uh, a different vibration and frequency of your body. So if you harmonize that to your body, then your body can more easily deal with it. Um, so if you have the intentions of the things in the air, it's just you know putting your intentions into that you know, of the cleaning, clearing, harmonizing, making everything, you know, um, changing it from harmful to beneficial, things like that. Um, so that would be my best suggestion. Um, how well it will work is really dependent upon how much you allow that process to work because we are super flipping powerful beings and we can do some amazing, amazing creations. Well, and some well, yeah, amazing without judgment <laughs> creations. Um, so, yeah, that's that. That's what I would suggest to work with with through through the air. Um, how far apart can the quantum grid points be to to? A Sorry, I got to reread this this morning. Um, how far apart can the quantum grid point be to affect to be effective with each other? Um, oh, certainly. So the quantum grid points, you can take them on the other side of the planet and they're still going to be connecting to each other. So all quantum grid points are connecting to all the grids, all the pyramids that we create all over the planet. But the particular set that you get, so when you get a set, it's kind of like that is your set. It is connected to all of them, but then they are all connected right there because that's you know, that's your, that's your intention right there is that they're all yours. They're connected. They are creating their own space as well as the support of all the others. So those grid points can go as far apart as you wish, and they're all still connected. And then if you have that triangle pattern and it's clear across your state or clear across the Midwest or whatever, within that space, it is going to be holding that energetics of what it is that you guys are all intending those to create. So it creates that big space in between there. So actually the farther apart you take these things that are, that are your grid points, the larger that space is that you intended to create. So um, yeah, the farther the part, the better really, because then you are affecting a larger space with your light and your intentions um, right there. 
So, um, let's see. And I'm going to go a little faster because I see we have 24 unanswered questions today. We really might have 50 questions for the first time. Um, Marie, what happens when you wear the quantum heart coil with the wisdom wand? Does that mean simultaneously other people's stuff and your own stuff leave? Does one amplify the other? So the quantum heart coil is, again, very much working with you and your personal field. Now, the wisdom wand, um, the wisdom wand, too, has that that fibrous cocoon field that holds you in a field, but it doesn't have the same qualities as what this coil pendant does. Now, the wand is only going to run energy and affect those around you when you have the intention and you're using it to run energy and affect those people around you. Because the coil or the wand, they only, they're, they're not creating a field in the environment like a tensor field generator would. They are very much within your personal space unless you use your intention, visualization, imagination to send this energy out of your space to something else, like when you're wanding or when you're creating a column of light. Otherwise, very much personal your space. Um, so it's not going to, you know, the only way that it will really affect those around you is that it's how you affect people around you anyway, because as your field grows and changes and expands, you know, you totally affect those people that come into your field. And some of our energy fields like our Merkaba is like 52 feet across. Some of them like our heart is like six feet across is all, but we have all of these energy fields that extend out of us that do affect other people in the more refined and higher our field is, the more we can affect those around us. So if you really want to make that positive change outside, do it here first and then allow that to expand out. Um, truly. Whew. Sorry if I ever sound like I'm on a soapbox <laughs> or preachy. Certainly don't mean to be. Um, just sharing um, sharing what I, what I know, but maybe not practice all the time myself. I wish I did. Um, Christine, I wear the silver wisdom coil pendant with the silver alchemist set and really want to add the quantum heart pendant. Would I replace the wisdom coil or would it benefit to add it to wear both coils? So, um, so the, the question is, um, they have an alchemist set, the silver alchemist set of three rings. And, uh, let's see. And they added the, um, and they want to add the quantum heart pendant. Um, so right now you have the wisdom coil pendant, which is the, the smaller wisdom wand. Now you can wear both of those together. And in reality, if you are, you know, cause the little wisdom wand pendant is meant to be something that you can, it, it'll hold that field in that space, but the coil is so much more advanced than that. But at the time that we made it, it was holding that beautiful, beautiful space, the predecessor feel to this one. And then the other advantage was is that you could take that pendant off and use it to run energy or anchor columns of light like you do with the wisdom wand, just like a full-size wand, but it's just a little pendant. Um, so that was the advantage of having the little wisdom, the, the quantum wisdom wand pendant was that you could run energy. Now then once we get to the coils, the coils are something that are, again, they're, you don't run energy. They're just for a personal field. So, um, um, Marie, I would suggest, you know, going to just the coil um, with that, but it's not going to do any harm to wear any extra tools with that. It's going to all synergize and harmonize. Um, oh, and that was for Christine. Sorry. Um, Okay, uh, another question from Marie. What is the new single tensor field water ring in the new energy transformation kit? Haha, <laughs> so the energetic transformation kit, we just updated it. And the question is about the ring that is in that kit. This is the ring. The ring is actually uh, from the Water Wisdom Alchemist set, and we don't sell these as individual rings. This one is the Divine I Am. 
and the wisdom. So this one ring that we created, um, it was intended to bring all of the highest benefits of working with water into this one single ring. Um, and we're still playing with the energetics of this, but this is the ring that comes with that energetic transformation kit. It's one that I can still barely get over my wrist. So it's a nice wrist sized one um, that you can take with you anywhere. And it again, the energetics is contains almost everything that we've created, except for the everything ring. Um, it, it contains, you know, it builds on almost all the energetics so far. So it is partly the wisdom ring. It's partly the divine I am. And it's partly everything else that we've created up until now. So we may end up, if we can figure out the energetics of this one, um, we may end up releasing this as, as a single ring by itself. But right now, this is only available in either the energetic transformation kit or as one of the three parts in the personal alchemist wisdom water kit. Um, so anyway, pretty fantastic little ring here. And we may end up releasing this on its own at some point in time once we, once we figure out exactly what all the energetics are in here. But, um, and, and do some comparison to what this is like in comparison to just the wisdom ring and then comparison to the water alchemist trio. So that's why we haven't released it yet is because we still need to look and see truly what the difference is energetically between this, the trio and the wisdom ring. Um, but it's a kind of a combination of, of both of those. Pretty fantastic ring. Oh shoot. I thought we had 24 new questions. Oh no, we only had 24 questions all together. So it looks like, we have made it through the questions here this morning and then go over here to the chat tab to see what's going on. Um, hey, people from everywhere. So um, and I think we'll be done with questions then, but we'll, we'll address a couple of things here, um, which is this whole situation with... Um, Ukraine and Russia and the struggle of power. So one of the, the people that I, that I like to listen to from the Crimson Circle, they do a, um, they did a, a free thing on 222 and his was all about power. And so they were seeing that there was this giant energy vortex of power that was going through Russia and Ukraine and that it was drawing in from everywhere and throughout time and from everywhere, the whole issue and struggle with power. Um, so we did a space holding the other day on, on last Tuesday with that whole thing of, of the struggle of power in Ukraine and in, in Russia, um, which was pretty phenomenal. So uh, again, going back to, um, you can anchor columns of light and columns of light are a fantastic, powerful thing to do. Now, when you're in the doing, and that's, that's the thing is that, as when you're taking the warrior stance of the doing, um, you know, when you're trying to affect things, no matter what, when you come in there in that doing way, to me, it always still feels like there is an agenda, that there is a judgment, that we are trying to save people, that we're trying to fix situations that we are saying that this is not the way it is supposed to be, but this is the way that it's supposed to be. Or, or even if you have the generalized, um, you know, even if you're like, okay, peace, I want there to be peace, even though peace is a beautiful, magnificent word and feeling and expression, maybe peace is not exactly what is needed there. Maybe there still needs to be that movement but when we hold our light there, that brings peace. But it also brings that ease and flow. It brings the grace and ease to the situation. 
So there's still things that are coming through that, that this is needed. And it is also needed as, as many of us perceive that it is a wake up call to all of humanity, that this is coming up right now to people, for people to see and for people to be like, wait, this isn't right. Um, so what I am saying is that there are many larger things at play here that we may not see or understand. And so when we hold that space, when we simply hold light onto something, we're holding that space for whatever it is to be um, without judgment, without, without any of that. Because, um, yeah, because things are so much bigger than what we perceive them as. We just don't have that understanding, um, you know, on, on a lot of things that happen, you know, and look at things in our own life, you know, so that is where it's, um, that's where I have the problem with doing these, these larger meditations with people, group meditations that we go in and we try to fix things because that is not part of the new, of, of the paradigm that I work in. It's not going in and trying to fix and heal. So if we do want to do something as a group, we would basically have to get into that space where we are simply just shining our light. Um, you know, and even though we are making a light workers kit that is available in there for you to do and to anchor the columns of light, but still when you use this wand to anchor the columns of light, it is only going to be bringing through those higher fields, a space it's, it's, um, cause it's a fine line between holding space because you know that this situation is is is, is um, there's a lot of turmoil and chaos and it's explosive and the whole thing and people are dying and there's destruction and all of that and none of us want to see that none of us want to see that but we can't go in as light warriors we have to go in as light bearers light holders light emitters space holders as peace holders. So I totally would be down to do a guided meditation for this. Um, and again, in what is in the highest and best good, and we just hold our light. Um, so anyway, it's been, been a while since we've done something of this nature in the group project, but um, let's go ahead. I'll walk us into the heart space and I will help us bring in um, those fields so that we can step into that bright, beautiful light that we are. And then we're just going to radiate that beautiful peace and light that we are. And we're only going to do it for a few seconds so that we don't get caught back up into the head and trying to direct. So if you would like to join us, then we're going to do that meditation right now. All right. So just being in your space, going to the heart, connecting heart to heart with the earth, breathing in that supporting love of the earth up into the heart, connecting heart to heart with creation, breathing in that supporting love of source, soul, creator, God. However you see and say that, that third breath, you become that column of light that is connected to creation, grounded to the earth, and you're in the heart. You are a column of light. Now we imagine that fibrous cocoon around, around you, around your chest, your heart, or around you. And within that space is your light, brilliant, bright, untainted, and untaintable. Taking those deep breaths in, breathing in all that you are, bringing in your entire essence within you here and now. All that you are as a soul, all of your light, all of your wisdom. As a container, we are all together and we are all connecting heart to heart. Imagine this little infinity 
between you and the heart of each and every one of us. And we are connecting soul to soul, not junk to junk. So it is okay. We are creating a safe, beautiful, sacred space that we are all in support of one another with our soul, with our consciousness. As we have this beautiful, giant, bright container of light, we simply shine it onto the entire situation of war in Russia, the Ukraine, sending that out to cover the people and to cover the situation. And we also send that light out to all of those who witness the situation. All of those on the planet can see that light when they look at this. Again, simply sharing your light, your wisdom, your compassion, your empathy without judgment, without being like, oh, those poor people or, oh, that son of a gun. Hold the light equally for all. Because as our light goes in and affects those in power, we hold a special compassion for those in power to allow them to come into the heart, to allow them to connect. To allow that compassion to flow through them. Beautiful. Now then we just let this go. Let's all step back, but let's leave our light there. Let's leave that light, but let's all step back with our awareness. Intending to be able to keep holding that space. As you come back into your physical body, start coming all the way back here, letting that go. Now then you can still put your awareness and attention there. So at any time, this beautiful, beautiful, vibrant light that we have spread all over there, you can go back and put your attention onto that and check it out. And if you step back from that whole thing far enough, you will see all of those who are there shining their light as well. But as we come together, as all of us here, 32 of us in this here now moment, but hundreds more that will be watching this, joining our container and sharing their light as well. Uh, thank you all. It's been a pleasure here today and not sure if I will be around next Friday or on the road. So I will see you um, next time for sure. Thank you. Been a pleasure. Take care.